Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Take a seat. Wow. Uh, I wish I could have spent all morning talking to you guys. What an impressive group of people. Um, and just from all across the country and Look at, look at this, the Chapter Leadership Summit keeps on getting bigger and bigger and bigger every single year. It's just amazing. And so I, I wanna make sure we spend, uh, and we have plenty of time for questions. And uh, cause I know that we didn't get, we get enough, we did not get enough time at breakfast. But I wanna talk about the need, the, the priority of living a deep life. And every single one of you that have decided to be a Turning Point USA Chapter Leader, you have made an intentional decision that you want to live a deep life over an easy life. And almost every single one of you, unless you go to like, I don't know, Arkansas Baptist. Where's my Arkansas Baptist people, by the way? I saw them somewhere. Yeah, you, you might have it a little easy. Um, but, and then I, I, I meet, you know, I ask the question of many of you, you go to Suffolk and Boston, geez, um, or Oswego in New York, or all these very, very liberal places. And I say, is it easy being a Turning Point USA chapter leader. And many of you would say, no. You get criticized, you get called names, you get smeared, you get slandered. But then the most important question is not whether it is easy or not. It is, is it worth it? And the answer to that is, of course it's worth it. And that is a very profound point. And that will be my entire remarks this morning and then we'll do questions, which is, the modern culture, largely driven by secularism, tells you what you should do is the easy thing, not the deep thing. And in life, you will realize the more rewarding thing to do might be the more difficult thing to do. For example, starting a Turning Point USA chapter, organizing your, your friends, getting involved on campus, that is a guaranteed way that you will experience opposition. And one of the reasons why I'm so inspired by you, and I hope you are inspired by each other, when you see how many other chapter leaders there are across the country doing the same things that you are doing, is that you are telling your peers that I am taking the more difficult road because America is worth saving more than my popularity on campus. That America is far more important to me and my life than whether or not the purple-haired jihadis or the trans mafia on campus is gonna say good things about you. You should delight and rejoice in the opposition. You should be thankful that you are able to do something that is worthwhile. Every single day I am asked the question by many patriots across the country, what can I do? What can I do to save the country? You answer that question every single day because you are doing the work to save this beautiful republic. And I want you to think about the rest of your life, the lessons that you learn as a Turning Point USA chapter leader. It's very, very important that Taking the deep, but sometimes the difficult road is the way that you should configure your life. For example, getting married and having children is a difficult but deep decision that I hope every single one of you make at some point in your life. However, the culture will tell you, you might not have as much time to yourself. You might not be able to travel the world. You might not have as much money all of those things are true. And your answer should be, so? I want a deep and meaningful and purposeful life, not an easy life. And we as conservatives must be very clear as that, with that. If you want an easy life, then you become a leftist. They will pay for your college, forgive your student loans, give you free stuff, you do drugs all day, sit idly by, have no kids, complain all the time, and protest. You see, we as conservatives make a decision to live a more adventurous life that will come with difficulty, that will come with opposition. But when it's all said and done, who is happier? 600 plus Turning Point USA chapter leaders or 600 plus BLM trans activists on college campuses across the country. You are a happier group of people. You have more joy. And it's because you are fighting for something 
and for ideas, and you are doing something that is bigger than you. The news flash, and the more, the earlier you can embody this, is that life properly lived is about duty and obligation and obedience, not just self-pleasure or doing what you want to do all the time. And that opens the question, duty to what or duty to whom? Now, I know there's lots of different religious views here, but I hope we can all agree that duty to the divine or duty to the eternal or duty to God is the most important thing that a human being can do in his or her life. And a belief that two things, there is a God and you are not him, are two of the most important things that you can believe and internalize. You see, it is... It is an amazing thing to witness because I am given hope by so many of you who know the stakes. I get asked every single day by people that are, they want to make a difference. And they say, but I might be called bad names. I might be criticized. I might be ridiculed. And I say, well, why don't you come and meet some of our Turning Point chapter leaders? They're always criticized and ridiculed. And they love it and they delight in it, and they keep on organizing. And this is one of the reasons why I believe we will ultimately win, is because when a movement grows in number, despite all the attempts by the bad guys to slow down our movement, that means that we want it more, and it does not matter what names that they call us, we are going to keep on organizing, we're gonna keep on spreading the message, we're gonna keep on multiplying. I mean, look around this room. This room right here is the left's worst nightmare. This room right here is 600 plus high school and college students from every walk of life in every different place of the country, from Florida to Washington to, to Illinois to Wisconsin to Arizona, where many of you did not know each other before this weekend. And you say, I want my children to live in a free society, and we are here to save the country so that we no longer have to live in a communist totalitarian hellhole. That right there shows that you are taking agency and taking action with purposeful intent. And so when you lay out what you want your life to look like, the, when pursuing a deep life is, is one of the most important things that you can do. Second thing I want to talk about here, uh, which is, I think, incredibly important, is when you are presented with choices in, in life, when you, are, when you are given a binary choice, for example, whether or not you want to take an extra job, whether or not you want to work those extra hours, it is far more important to think about your duty and your obligation and obedience rather than how you feel. How you feel is completely irrelevant. How you act is far more important. For example, some of you probably woke up this morning and said, 7.30 a.m. breakfast, I feel tired. I'm just going to sleep in. Would that have been the right decision? Because if you allow your feelings to determine your action, what kind of life are you going to live? Instead, you allow your values to determine your action, not your feelings. And that is why if you have strong values, your life will look infinitely richer and deeper. You see, the left, they want your feelings to determine your action. I feel oppressed. I feel as if I'm marginalized. Completely irrelevant. We don't care. What do your values say? Well, my values say I might be tired. I might be low on sleep. Might have had a long light night last night. The hotel room next to me might have smelled funny and they made all these weird noises, but my value system is that I care about the country more than I care about getting nine hours of perfect sleep, so I'm showing up and I'm going to present myself best to the country. That is about duty and obligation over self. And what I am talking about is the exact opposite of every mainstream cultural norm happening in the country right now. Every mainstream cultural norm is, well, it's my truth. I can do whatever I want with my life. And of course, you can do whatever you want, but ought you do whatever you can? And that is the most important question because there really is a way that all of us should live. And the way we should live is to glorify God, to work diligently, 
to serve church and charity and defend liberty and freedom. These are the things that we must prioritize in our life. And I encourage, here's some homework for every single one of you in the days that follow on your flights home. Write what you consider to be the core beliefs of your life. Four to five things. Think deeply about it. Don't do it right now, but you know, write down a reminder to do it. Four or five things of what are your core values. I just listed mine. And by the way, Hillsdale College is very similar, and I saw them, I think it's amazing. What are the four to five core things that you want to accomplish in your life? For example, for me, I want to honor God in all that I do. I want to be a great husband, a great father. I want to serve this country. I want to try to continue to lead this movement and to speak truth and to never lie. Whatever those values are, the sooner you are able to write down those values, it does not matter then what you study, if you go to college or you don't go to college, everything you do should fit neatly within those core mission principles and values for the rest of your life. That simple practice and practice and that simple exercise alone is one of the most important things you can do in your life to make sure that you have a proper course forward because I'm sure you know many people in your life that are depressed, that are anxious, young people that don't have direction because if you ask them, what are your core values? They'll say is to serve self. You wanna know why we have the most depressed, alcohol addicted, drug addicted generation in history? Because we have a generation that only thinks about themselves all day long. They don't think about what they should do to serve others, to serve God or to serve their country. You want to break the spell of depression and anxiety in this country? 99% of it can be broken when you tell a young person to stop thinking about yourself all the time and said, think about what you should do to help other people and to defend this country above yourself. Stop being a narcissist all the time and start acting with duty and obligation. I'll close with this and then we'll do some questions. It is very tempting for you to think like a victim as a conservative on campus. I'm outnumbered, I get, I get graded terribly. Guess what? Opposition is part of life. You have a choice. You can complain about all the opposition that you receive or you can embrace it and say this is going to make me stronger. This is going to make me tougher. Every single one of you will become a stronger and tougher and more likely to succeed adult later and later in life because of the opposition that you experience. I want you to think about the other people on campus that scream like maniacs because you use the wrong pronoun. Are they going to be people that are gonna be more likely to succeed? Because here's the issue. You could try to remove all the different sorts of triggers, oh, your pronouns, or I don't like your Turning Point USA sign, or you're not allowed to have an event, or you're not allowed to table on campus. You could keep on trying to remove the triggering type of elements, but eventually in life, you're gonna have to face what you hate the most. And you as a Turning Point USA leader, you've had to do that at a very, very young age. You know what opposition looks like. And I'm sure at the beginning, it feels rather intimidating. They call you all these nasty names. You don't know how to deal with it. But then after a month, they're like, I don't care. After six months, how many times can you be called a racist? Who here has been called a racist because of being involved in Turning Point USA? Raise your hand. Look around. It's not, not the most. It means nothing. It means nothing. You tell them, say, okay, what else you got for me? Bigot, xenophobe, sexist, misogynistic, colonialistic, transphobe. Just be like, look, I'm a patriot. I love this country. Your name calling means nothing to me. It means nothing to me. In fact, they have diluted and they have watered down those terms so much because they cannot engage in debate. They cannot talk about values. They cannot talk about reason, logic, history, principles, eternal wisdom. So they must result to weaponized name calling. And as soon as you tell them, your name calling does nothing to me. It means nothing to me. I'm gonna keep on growing. I'm gonna keep on organizing. What are you gonna do about it? And then sometimes they'll flip your table or throw something at you because that's, that's all that they have left is that every day your existence 
as a turning point chapter leader, weakens their stranglehold on this country. Our movement is ascendant. It is growing. It is multiplying by numbers. Recent polls show that young men are the most conservative they have been in 50 years. 50 years. And that's right. And young ladies, we're making some progress. We just had our Young Women's Leadership Summit, 1,500 young women. It was amazing. They are four points less liberal than they were a couple years ago. Gen Z is on pace to be the most conservative younger generation since 1988. That is Gen Z, everybody. And you are playing a huge role. You play a bigger role than you even realize. Because for every single one of you, there are a couple thousand students that wish they could speak out like you do. And courage is a choice. It takes no skill to be courageous. You might come up to the microphone and say, Charlie, I don't know my talent, I don't, my, don't know my skill. The cool thing about being courageous is you just have to say, I choose to be courageous. That's it. And every one of you have already made a step in that direction by being a Turning Point chapter leader. We are on the edge of making Gen Z historically conservative, and they never thought this would happen. They thought that the environmental death cult and the trans nonsense and the BLM crap was going to turn Gen Z into the most liberal generation ever. Instead, Turning Point USA and your leadership, organizing every single day, is pushing back against those lies, painting a different picture, saying, you know what? I want you to be able to own a home, get married, have children, and live in a decent country, and not have to live under this nonsense that they've been doing in this country. And so what you, have, what you are doing every day is making a profound and real difference. And courage is a choice. And the rest of your life, you will continue to have those choices. And the more often that you choose the deep, the difficult, but the right path over the easy path is one that will reward you, your family, and this beautiful nation.